Hey guys, this is Smack4TW here. Um, I want to show you how to convert pretty much any video so it will be playable on anything you want really. The Apple TV, the iPhone, iPod, any Apple thing as well as the Xbox 360. This should work for um, should work for the PS3 as well. Just pretty much anything you want. So, well, first of all you want to make sure QuickTime, I'll start using QuickTime. As a demonstration here. Sorry about that sound. It's uh, sitting on a leather couch, so when I move it, it kind of makes a farting noise. It's not me. Um, anyway, with QuickTime, it's probably the easiest option to use. It pretty much comes on your computer, except you need to upgrade it to Pro, which is $30. But all you need to do is enter the registration into the QuickTime thing, hit enter, and it'll be QuickTime Pro. So, simple enough. It's not expensive either, so it works well enough for the beginning user I guess so anyway first of all to make sure it'll open whatever file types you need you need to install some codecs for divx xvid files you need to install the divx codec for osx all this stuff is on my front row quicktime video so just watch that it'll cover all the codecs and crap but I'll run through them real fast so anyway for X, uh, divx video you need the divx codec just search for divx for osx and install that then for MKVs you need Parian, so just search for Parian Tools for OS X. It's also in my other video. Install that. And then for Windows Media Video you need Flip for Mac. Now Flip for Mac costs money, unless you're just watching the videos, but to export it costs money. And nobody uses Windows Media Video anymore, so I would just skip that all together. So anyway, once you have that installed, you want to open the movie you want to convert in iTunes. So I'll just use this example of a video I made in uh, for YouTube. And, yeah, well, if it's an MKV, this bar here won't be dark yet. It'll be, uh, it'll start getting dark from this side, kind of like that. Well, just from this side, this way. And you're going to have to wait for the whole thing to get dark before you can do anything to it. And that's because it has to pre-cache MKVs for some reason. But other than that, you can just start right off the bat. Um, go to Window, and then go to Show Movie Properties. Now here you see the different tracks. This only has one soundtrack and one video track. But if you're doing a movie, it might have more than one soundtrack or subtitles that you want to get rid of, so you just uncheck those boxes. It will only export what's checked here. So in this case, it's both of those. Then here under audio settings, you can get the volume up higher if, if it's too soft or if you think it's too loud, just you know lower it. Um, you can set the balance, the bass, if you're running it on speakers with a lot of bass, you might want to lower it. If they're really cheap speakers with no bass, you might want to get that higher. Or, you know, the treble, same thing. Depends on the speakers you're playing it on or where. So you just close that when you're done. And then you go to File and Export. Click here. And this list pops up and you can pick what you want to export to. You got Apple TV, iPhone. iPhone Cellular is a lower resolution version of the iPhone, which is made to be smaller files so you can send it over the cellular network. I'd stay away from it because people don't really do that and it'll look a lot shittier so just use the regular iPhone if you want to play it on iPhone iPod Touch. The iPod which I mean it's kinda like the iPhone just lower resolutions for the for the widescreen iPods, the iPod classics. Um, yeah I, I'd never use AVI it looks like shit like really have no idea it takes forever and it looks worse than a VHS recording so yeah, anyway, after you've done that, you just pick the name you want, where to save it to, and you hit save, and it starts exporting. It won't take that long. It, well, it's not popping up. There we go. 46, it'll, it'll, you'll see it start speeding up. This should take about 10 minutes to export. It's, it's pretty fast, actually. So, yeah, 12, yeah, about 10, 12 minutes. So, yeah, let me cancel that since I don't need this converted. And quick, quick time. Now, this next option, they stopped making the software, actually. It's called Visual Hub. It's great. It, I think it used to cost $30, just like QuickTime. I'm not sure. Since they don't make it anymore, I mean, there's still ways you can get your hands on it. They might not be illegal, but, I mean, you might also know someone with a license that could give you one. Um, you might have it if you're lucky and just never used it. You might have bought it sometime. I don't know. If you can get your hands on this, though, it's great. It allows a lot more control for QuickTime, and I, I just like it better. So here you see a bunch of tabs. You got iTunes, PSP, DV, DVD, AVI, you know, whatever you want. Now, we're looking for the Apple TV tab, so we're going to click on the iTunes tab. 
Now here you want to optimize this for, you can pick for um, all devices which I've never used, I mean it's got too many variables in it, which, which size is it going to pick, Apple TV or iPhone, you know? So I'd rather just pick a specific one. We got iPods, Apple TV, iPhone. Now this Apple TV here is stereo sound only, and this one is only surround sound, which you're thinking, well, why would I want stereo if my Apple TV will play surround sound? Well, most people don't, but if you have an Xbox 360 and you want to be playable on that, you do need stereo, so then you'd be stuck with this and no surround sound. But this software has this nice little option where if you put in a surround sound movie, it'll make a stereo audio track out of it and put them both in. So you'll have both audio tracks. That way on the Apple TV it'll play surround sound and on the Xbox 360 it'll play stereo. Really nice. So let's use that. Now, the quality here doesn't mean how long it takes. Like, as you can see here, it says more quality means more disk space used. So Go Nuts, which is what I always leave it to, gives you pretty much the file size that you're converting from. Now, I always use this because I don't want to shrink my movies. I just want to convert them to a different format. So I want them the same size. Now, this it, having both audio tracks will make it a little bit bigger, but not that much. It, it'll just make it this second stereo audio track bigger, which means, I don't know, on a 4.5 gig movie, HD, you might get an extra one or two hundred megs worth of size there because of the second audio track. So I just leave it on there, you know. I, I don't really burn my stuff to DVDs anymore. It takes too long and hard drives are cheap, so fuck it. And make sure you check H.264 encoding. Then what I do, which this makes it take twice as long, but it will look a lot better. And don't let that don't you'll screw it all up thing that pops up scary. It's really simple. All I do is check two pass right here. That means it's going to do a two-pass encode, which means it runs through the whole video twice. It takes twice as long, but makes it look a whole bunch better. iMovie used to have this option to where if you enable two-pass, you could fit twice as much video on DVD than without two-pass. Like, with one pass, it would give you one hour on normal DVD, and with two-pass, it would give you two hours. So, that will give you a slight idea of what two-pass is able, to, you know, capable of doing. So, anyway, let's drag the file we're going to convert in here. This is exporting from ScreenFlow from another video I made. Sorry about that. I just export everything to desktop. It makes it easier for me to sort crap out and see when it's done. And anyway, here, pick where to save it to. I'll just original file location is fine. And just hit start. And it will prepare the audio. And then it will start the first pass. I'll just... I mean, oh, i got to wait for the audio to finish preparing before I can cancel it, I believe. But, yeah, I mean, that's... yeah. Let me cancel that. That's all there is to that. Now, for some reason, when you cancel something in Visual Hub, it still keeps encoding. But it won't output anything, so you got to go into Activity Monitor and kill that. Up. Here we go. VH131, so just quit that process. If if you actually let it run through the movie, uh, this is still running from another video I made. Um, if you actually finish encoding the movie, it's, you don't get that problem, but since I canceled it, it just, for some reason, won't quit properly. It's an old software. It's, Stop shipping for that many updates to it, so yeah. Now the third tool I use is expensive as all hell, but it works really nicely. It's a compressor. Now it's part of Final Cut Studio. And yeah, let me show you how to use this real fast. I'm sorry it's running slow. I'm encoding this thing in screen flow and you know. So anyway, you get this. It looks kind of like this. It's usually more organized. I just have my ship move around because I've been using this to make other videos. Show people how to use this. Anyway, you get the movie you want to export. Put it here. Now I have clusters enabled on my compressor, so I'll tell you what will and won't pop up because I didn't feel like disabling all my stuff, but yeah. So here's the presets. Now I drag the movie there, you got drag a uh, setting here. So we're going to scroll down here, you got DVDs, DV, you can convert this to lossless, you know, whatever you want pretty much. But we want under the Apple thing, here we go, you hit Apple, and Apple devices, you know. Apple TV, right there, it'll put the right bit rate on it right size, everything. So you just drag that in here, there's the sample, and you just hit submit. It's going to submit it to my cluster, but see that it tells me about this cluster. Then you can set the priority, but if you don't have a cluster this just won't pop up and it'll just submit once you hit this button. You won't have to hit this. So let me hit that. Under batch monitor it'll show you the progress and there we go. Let me pick my cluster and it's just, you know, it's gone. So that's how to use compressor for this. Um, it's really expensive, so unless you use it for other stuff, I use it for video editing, but unless you use it for other stuff, you're not going to want to use compressor. 
So I'd probably stick with the Visual Hub if I was you. Now, if you have a compressor or access to it, maybe your school has a computer with it on it that you can use for compressing, you know, a nice, fast Mac Pro, set it up, you know. Maybe you can include it in your cluster or something. It'll save you a lot of time. But anyway, yeah, I hope this video helps. If you need clarification on anything, you have any questions, just let me know, and I'll do my best to help. All right, bye.